listening to the Sound Pound Podcast, hosted by me, Francisco Castro. And here we have... Today we'll be discussing about audio and sound design. Here I'll be talking about waveforms and fire formats. Melinda, what will you be talking about? Uh, I will be talking about the sample rate and quality, also 8 and 16 bit sounds. I will be talking about mono, <coughs> stereo, and surround sound and their relations to the multimedia industry. I will be talking about relations to file size, file compression. Well, that's great to hear. Well, let's begin with me as the host. So, waveforms. Audio waves come in, in two types, analog and digital, where analog tries to replicate the original waveform. So it's, you know, real life sound like a click while digital waveforms typically replicate it using machine language or zero ones. Uh, hexadecimal. So seeing a uh, sound wave diagram, you would see that the analog waveform would be of curvy, you know, your traditional sound wave form, while digital would be a bit more of a rigid square shape. This is meaning that digital is more precise in how it figures out the original sound wave, so it's easier to find the pitch and the intensity of the sound. One of the topics in waveforms is volume, where volume describes the intensity of a sound wave, which creates either a perceived loudness or quietness in a sound. Volume in sound waves are usually measured in decibels, where zero would be silence, which is the furthest that a human, lowest the human can hear, and typically a f dangerous level is usually for 85 and above, which would be a jackhammer, that's typically what you'd see. Another topic in sound waves would be frequency, where frequency is one of the determinants in vibration of a sound, the other being amplitude. Frequency controls the speed and the pitch of the sound wave, which means that it's typically good for manipulating musical sounds. Frequency is determined by Hertz, HZ, where Hertz represents the amount of wave cycles per second. In a graph, you would see lower frequencies at, with lower wave cycles, so up in crest and troughs, where crests are the higher points of the sound wave and troughs are the lower points of the sound wave. For example, 3 Hz would indicate that there will be 3 wavelengths per second in the audio clip. Well, that pretty much wraps it about sound waves. Let's go on to our other guest, Belinda Sultana. Uh, hello, so uh, sample rate is, so the number of samples that is collected within a noise, so per second there is a waveform, mm -hmm. and this is um, going to be represented evenly on the digital scale mm -hmm. so the higher rate of samples that is taken within the audio per second will make the rate more accurate so this can be easily seen within a cd where the sample rate is 44,100 hertz which is 44.1 kilohertz by having this it would give a maximum frequency of 20 um, 20 kilohertz uh, so that's the highest frequency as francisco said before which is normally audible by humans so, Melinda, where would this be used in the multimedia industry? Good question, Francisco. So, within the multimedia industry, the sample rate can be evidential within CDs and DVDs. So, they are primarily used for storing audio and video, such as songs and movies. All right. Well, Casey, on to you. You're talking about mono stereo sounds, aren't you? Yeah, mono stereo and surround sounds and their relations to the multimedia industry. Ah, well, care to tell so, us? So, yeah. To begin with mono sounds, uh, mono sound is a type of sound where audio is mixed and then routed through a single channel. A well-designed mono oral system will regulate the volume and all listeners will hear the sound at essentially the same level. An example is within like an audio loop, uh, it'll come from a single point within the loop because all of the sound systems are like rooted together as opposed to in sur surround or stereo sounds where they'll come from multiple points within this audio loop. Mm -hmm. And an example of where it's used is in a shopping center over the loudspeaker, as all the audio streams are mixed and then routed through the speaker system and they come over the intercom. Mono audio is relevant to the multimedia industry because it is used as an accessibility feature on smart devices more than anything else in this current day and age, because it enables people who are hard of hearing or deaf in one ear to never miss out on the audio experience by running the audio through one channel, which is even through both speakers in the system, as opposed to this typical stereo audio, which includes distinct left and right channels, so different ears get different sounds. So two or stereo does two audio tracks where mono does one? Yes, sir. <laughs> Alright, well, any further information? So, yeah, so stereo sound, right? It, as I said, it routes it through two different audio channels that play through different speakers or through stereo headphones mm. at different times. And it is 
limited as it can only use two speakers within the system and it's not true surround sound. Mm. And the way it works is it gives the illusion, like a digital illusion of audio perspective by playing different sounds at different volumes, frequencies and times to give the, per- the illusion of perspective. So an example is within video game or movie watching with head- like stereo headphones in, a car might play through one earphone at a specific time and then play through the other one at a slightly lower volume and a slightly delayed pace to create yeah. the illusion that it's on one side. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and then it is used throughout the multimedia industry in this day and age, typically through gaming and um, how the gaming, the competitive gaming industry has taken advantage of it and now uses it as a standard in these the competitive gaming scene. So would you say in the gaming industry, would stereo mono, if one person has stereo and one person has mono, would the stereo person have an advantage? Yes, 100%, because the stereo gives them this digital illusion of perspective within the, the game, so they can see, they can hear footsteps and sounds coming from different digital perspectives. As you have the unique position of being deaf in one ear, do you ever have the issue of stereo, whenever stereo with songs or games? It's interesting, because um, within video games, it works similar to reality in the fact that I can hear the lack of hearing more, more than the actual hearing, I'll be able to tell the perspective. Like, because how stereo works, how it delays sounds and changes the frequency, I'll be able to detect so, that through my one ear. Okay, so even with just the one ear, you can still pick up where the footsteps are coming from? Yes, but within stereo music, sometimes the way music works is it plays different instruments and parts of the song through different ears, which sometimes messes up the, the stereo listening experience. Okay. Well, is that it from you? Yeah, that's it. Mm. On to our last guest, Amir. Hey, um, I'm going to be talking about file compressions today. And for those who don't know what file compression is, um, basically file compression is used to reduce the file size of one or more files. When a file or a group of files is compressed, the resulting archive often take up 50 to 90 percent less disk space than the original files. Common type of file compression include zip, gzip, rar, <laughs> stufflet, and 7zip compression. Each one of these compression methods uses a unique algorithm to compress the data. Interesting, interesting. Uh, anything else? Yeah, and uh, also file compression benefits. Oh, file compression has a lot of benefits. Um, these benefits include storage space, transfer speed, and cost. Compressing data files allows you to store more files in storage space you have a available and for transfer speed um compressed files contain fewer bits of data than uncompressed files and as a consequence use less bad beef when you download them this means that the transfer speed that is to say the time it takes for you file, for your file to download is quicker it will take 10 seconds to download a file you have Bad. It will take 10 seconds to download a file if you have a bandwidth of a 1 megabytes per second available. You are downloading a file that is 10 megabytes in size. It only takes 5 seconds to download the file if the file is compressed to 5 megabytes. Ooh. Yes. And for the cost, <laughs> the cost of storing your data are reduced by compressing your files for storage because you can store more files in your available storage space. When they're compressed. Ah. So you're saying if I want to send an email of a file, it would be better to compress it than to not compress it? Yes, sir. Okay, well, on to our final topics. Firstly, I'll be discussing about file formats. I'll be discussing about sample quality, 16 and 8 bit audio. I'll be talking about surround sound and comparing surround mono and stereo sound. Well, first off, for file formats, we're going to begin with WAV file formats, or also known as Waveform Audio File Format. WAVs are made by Microsoft and IBM, in which they are typically standard for most Windows PCs now. Compared to MP3, they are uncompressed audio files, thus requiring a large amount of storage and being a lossless type of audio file. Typically, WAV is used when recording audio, as the audio is generally easier to manipulate within uh, software such as Audacity or Audition. Next, we're going to be talking about AIFF, or Audio Interchange File Format. This format was developed 
by Apple and developed for a Macintosh computer. However, it is still be able to be used in Windows computer. This was released during 1988. Similar to WAV files, AIFF files are uncompressed, thus allowing for higher quality sounds. However, with the same disadvantages as WAV files of having a larger amount of storage required. Next, MIDI file format or musical instrument digital interface. Typically, MIDI differs greatly from other audio file formats as they are not used in the traditional sense. Instead, they are used as instructions, where it contains a list of events and messages that tell the electronic device how to generate a certain sound. Typically, MIDI are used for like musical instruments such as keyboards and synthesizers, where professional sound designers, like us, uh, lastly, we're going to be talking about MP3. MP3 is an audio format where it's a compression style of file format where it reduces the overall number of bytes in the audio file, similarly to like a CD quality. Unlike other fi audio file formats, MP3 is a proprietary audio file format which makes it much harder to share with other audio designers. Now let's go on to our next topic with Melinda Sotana as sampling rate. Uh, sampling quality. Um so the sampling quality is the amount that is determined by the maximum dynamic range of the digitalized sounds. So within the number of bits, it contains certain information within each example. Um, for finding the dynamic range, uh, it is the ratio that is between the highest amplitude and the lowest amplitude. That is not a zero. So this is seen within the wavelength of the audio. The signals are expressed as decibels, which is dB, and sample size sample sizes does not define the quality of the file format. Anything else? So with 16 and 8 bit, it is analog noises that are computerized such as the rock beat being played on the drum or the strumming of a guitar. Um, these analog noises would be compressed so they become computerized with the 8th or to the 16th power. So like machine language? Yes. Um, these noises are noticeable on movies, video games, such as Super Mario Bros, so we can relate to a theme like Pixel. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Is that it? Yeah. Ah. All right, on to our final, final topic with Casey Neistat. Casey, take it away. So the final um, type of audio output is surround sound. And surround sound, it's a method of audio output where sound is transferred through multiple, so more than two, audio channels from speakers that surround the listener. It's intended to provide a truly immersive viewing and listening experience for the consumer. Surround sound typically is a, has speakers arrayed in, a, in an A, so there is a position of center surround where the listener is in the optimal position for listening and audio the audio perspective will be correct surrounding them. Okay. So it's like an experience. Yeah. And um, so the, the difference that Saran has to stereo is it's less of the illusion of perspective and it's more of just um, artificial perspective coming from speakers all around you instead of speakers on your left and your right. So would you say this is for like AR experiences? Like uh, VR? AR, VR, yeah. and it's typically used in, it was used in movie theaters first and then as technology got improved and the speakers downscaled they were it was put into home theaters and living rooms mm -hmm. to provide the immersive experience comparing mono to stereo to surround sound with mono being the the lower end of the scale and surround mm -hmm. being higher end of the scale stereo is still used a majority of the time because surround sound the technology is not developed to make it as accessible and as cheap and also, it's large and clunky, and in things like headphones, it just makes no sense to have that many speakers in a system. Mm -hmm. So stereo is still used a majority of the time. Anything else? No, sir. All right, well, I guess... Well, let's look at the time. Wow. Look at the time. Wow. Ah. Well, I guess I'll have to wrap up our first and last episode of Sound Pound, as our guest Melinda is dying. Anyways, I guess that wraps up... Well, uh, I guess that wraps up wraps. I guess that wraps up the first episode of SoundCloud, and it will probably be the last because we don't have any budget. We we're broke. Yeah, we're recording this under a bridge like trolls. That's all, folks. Uh, <laughs> good night. That's copyright. We can't Love you too. That's all. Lovely people. <laughs> Pokes. The Pokes. Worst. I want some po poquitos. I'll poke you. <laughs> Please don't fail us. <laughs>